Okay, we're going to call the uh, August 29th, 2018 meeting of the Lake and Sigmund Commission to order. Thanks everyone for uh, for coming. Um, first thing is the approval of the of the meeting minutes from the July meeting. Did everyone get a chance to read those? And yes. Mm -hmm. Do we have a motion to approve? Oh, did I have one correction? Oh, sorry. My name is inadvertently left off of them. I think we need to scrap those minutes immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Just going to postpone the meeting. We move that we direct the secretary to make a correction on the minutes. Second. All right. You might take a recess while she does that. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, so noted. Sorry about that. Um, we have a motion to approve even with that. Second. Yeah. All those in favor? Yeah. All right. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay. So voted. Um, the uh, now to uh, review bills and expenses. Do we have any bills and expenses? None in this month. All right. So nothing to review there. That's good. Um, commissioner's reports. I'm going to discuss a lot of things down the uh, down the line here. So. Um, just to, to kind of start off, it's been, been a busy, hot summer. So um, uh, there's been a lot of use in the lake and a lot of uh, activity out there. So it's kind of good to see. It, you know, it brings up issues, but um, you know, we're trying to do the best we can to keep things um, safe. So um, that's about all I have. Mr. Pica. Um Lake's kind of warm. Soupy with a lot of maturing grasses. It's out in the water this morning at 7 a.m. The uh, <coughs> I'll call them the eaglets were not on the tree when the nest is, so they may be um, exercising their wings and moving along. Um, <coughs> other than that, Mr. Chairman, uh, nothing further to report than otherwise to comment that on the other items that are going to come up on the agenda. Okay. Thank you. Officer <coughs> A couple things. Um, <coughs> I gave everybody a copy of the No Wake Six Mile Per Hour Road signs here. I spoke to um, Adam from Mass DOT about a week ago, a week and a half, and this is what he sent, sent me over from the engineering department. So I figured I'd bring it in here for everybody to look at. I think it shows what we need on uh, each span. And we discussed whether or not he was going to put white or amber on there. Uh, we, we weren't sure whether or not there was some sort of a um, rule of regulation against having <coughs> an amber sign underneath the bridge. I know they use it for highways and things like that, but he was going to check, check with uh, the engineering department and just make sure we can use amber before we go ahead and print those and put those up. So that's what it's going to look like. I think it's four by four by four, I think they are. Four by four feet? Yeah. It should fit in that whole span on an each side. Okay. It'll be three on uh, three on each side, so um, you can't say that you don't see them. So now we can deal with all the violations and okay. things like that. So. Um, and the, uh, are they going to modify this or morph it? Is it going to be, you know, the one now is kind of leaning on a on an angle, this is mm -hmm. going to be straight up and down? Or? No, it's going to be exactly the same, but it's going to be triple the size. Triple the size. Yeah. And, uh, and hopefully amber, so okay. it, it's visible from well over 100 yards. All right, and that's consistent with road sign. The, the amber color would be consistent yes. with the road sign. Yep. Yeah. I'm making this look just what people are used to seeing for, mm -hmm. you know, those kind of uh, uh, notifications. So, I mean, if anybody has recommendations on it, something else to put on the sign as far as wording, I just... I thought that would be fine. I mean, we can't put no towing because of, I don't think there's enough enough room to put it on there. Yeah, I'm concerned about that. But um, going six miles an hour. Go, uh, oh, no. <laughs> Just one quick question, Mr. Chairman. Uh, no units here. These are in inches, not centimeters. No, it's supposed to be four by four. So mm -hmm. that's I think that's the way you drew it up online. So. <coughs> okay. Um, I think the other the, the the other bridge had two signs on it. There was one that um, I had pictures of them, 
Um, they probably have them someplace. But uh, th there was one said no tone. One said no There tone. is one that says no tone. And then there was a, one is, is there? says two, the Shrewsbury sign on the south side of the bridge. Oh, okay. So there's, so there's already. There, you can't see it unless you're on top of it. Okay. All right. So. I mean, you know, if you're towing at six miles an hour, it's probably not going to. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, 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 the uh, spirit of that is to keep water skiers and wakeboarders mm -hmm. and. You know, anybody towing somebody, uh, some, a person well, it's that the rules and regs are posted at the boat ramps as well, so if they mm -hmm. don't know that, then you can still cite them for it. Okay. All right. Um, <coughs> yes. If I can add a couple other points. Sure. If, if Officer Sean, are you mm -hmm. done? Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, yesterday, uh, the town historian, Mike Perna, had an interview by uh, Channel 5's Chronicle. On the uh, interesting note, I think, on the age of driving. So, um, in mid September to late September, it'll be an item on this show. I think it's a pretty popular show. Most people have watched it. I'm not advertising the show per se, other than the, it's going to be on about, uh, who knows, a lot of times uh, segments on television shows are all one of three or four or five or ten minutes. But I guess we're going to have a segment on the age of driving, uh, kind of now and then segment. Uh, as he's uh, known on, on, on the Shrewsbury Chronicle, writing articles about such. So uh, that should be fairly interesting. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what they had for pictures, but Mike supplied a few pictures <coughs> um, <clears throat> of the edge of your driving. But unfortunately, uh, talking amongst people, there's not a lot of photos of the edge of your driving when it was functional. And besides that, just an additional note, hopefully people uh, watch the Shrewsbury Cable and have seen the latest issue of the Lake Show on Tatasa Beach. Which is fairly interesting. Again, I think, albeit that I'm a part of it, but just the same, it talks about historically uh, the private public beach called Tatasa Beach and when it was uh, very popular years ago. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, to add to those notes. Okay. Um, back to the sign. Does anyone have any other comments on the, on the wording of the sign, the position of it? The no? Maybe no, just read Patrick the sign for something. people at home. Oh, I'm sorry. The sign says, can you uh, focus on us with that? Both sides. Got it? So it's uh, no wake zone, six miles an hour mm -hmm. under the bridge. So um, that's pretty clear. Don't make a wake and, and keep it down. Yes? Uh, yeah. Just a, a quick comment, if I might. Um, if we could just leave it no wake and make it bigger, I think it would be more effective um, for two reasons. Number one, is no wake is pretty explicit and number two especially there are some boats that are actually built to make wakes and at six miles an hour will just be thought um that's what we have currently now i believe just my two cents <coughs> even if we put headway speed on that's what it's still used to say yeah so I take your point because, but uh, mm -hmm. although I, I'm going <coughs> to, I'm going to um, respectfully disagree that that a, that a wakeboard boat is six miles an hour. Six miles an hour is pretty slow. It, it's the, the only problem at six miles an hour with a wakeboard boat, it's hard to steer. It's like a jet ski because the rudder's behind it, and if you don't, if you're not pushing the water out behind it, so my fear would be that they couldn't, <laughs> they couldn't get the six miles an hour without, you know, uh, but Go, you know, go through it. Uh, I don't think it's going to make a considerable wake at six miles an hour. And the reason I'm saying that, that um, uh, my, my concern with this would be no wake is subjective, right? Six miles an hour is something you can actually measure. Is that accurate? So if, so if, we, if it came down to a thing as well as no wake and the guy said, I wasn't making a wake. Well, yes, you were. No, I wasn't. You know, so you weren't going six miles an hour. We're going faster than that. You can say, well, you know, the radar or whatever you, you clock and when does the radar go down to six miles an hour? It should pick it up. I don't, we don't have one, so. <laughs> so you don't know. <laughs> so anyway, that would be my only concern with that. But I, get, I take your point. Good point. Jerry, you had a comment? Uh, I kind of agreed with Patrick that just no wake and, and, and instead of the six miles an hour, you could put underneath no towing of any device. Yeah, well, that's getting wordy with the amount of space we have. So, um, uh, it's an education with a lot of people. I stopped the boat one night towing a G 
jet ski. I didn't stop him. I just you know, right. went like this, and he stopped. He said, what's the matter? I said, you can't tow that tube under the bridge. You're going to get a ticket. Oh, right. I can't tow the tube under the bridge? Kid didn't even know. Right. It's an education thing. These people don't even know. Right. No, I agree. So, but, uh, <coughs> Mr. Chair, I don't get too worried. Suggestion. Just yeah. a suggestion. Maybe you might say no wake. No, sir. Drop the zone. No wake. No towing. 6 MPH under bridge. So it, it you kind of get rid of the zone, but makes room for saying no towing as well. The old sign did say headway speed. The old signs from the old bridge. It was two different signs. I thought they had, yeah. Those were those are bigger and different signs. And yeah, they were much bigger. They were vertical, where these are going to be kind of on right. a slant. I'm just saying it did have I know. That. If I if I could have talked the state into just doing those two old signs. Um, they tried to talk to McCormick over there yeah. before they were doing it. He already well, did. they just they just those you know those guys just do what they do. They they do what the state tells them to do. So um, you know. I can say this, this is this is a this is a good step forward yes. because when we first approached DOT, they go, "Well, what signs? We didn't know there were signs under the thing. And <laughs> why do you need them? You know, so because they didn't, they weren't. Um, I'm not saying that they weren't aware, but they did, they just didn't um, kind of um, equate traffic going under the bridge and, and why we need to keep it regulated, and keep it down. Um, <coughs> so, uh, and even though that that's a higher stand and a wider and get a better view. It's still very dangerous because in this particular configuration, you can go um, east-west. You can go in between the spans. So that's that's um, uh, something. If everyone's going six miles an hour and no wake speed, that's probably not going to be a big deal. But if someone's buzzing through one thing and coming the other way, that's a, just a recipe for disaster. So um, uh, I, I really we do have a no towing sign on the bridge. So there there is one there. Um, that's, that's in the configuration that we presently have. So there, it, it, there is one that says that on there. I think, I think if you're going to do that, you're going to have to have two sides. Mr. Chairman, a question either through you or Officer Vivere. Is it possible to elevate the sign? It's now, the one on the bridge now is about a 45 degree angle. And if you're in a low boat, you really can't <coughs> see it. You've got to be up above looking right. down so on it to see it. They, mm -hmm. they, um, they, they took. Do you have any comment on that? Sean, we you. discussed this prior, and I don't think they want to um, do any drilling into the side of side mm -hmm. of the bridge or any of the spans. And the reason we came up with what we have uh, currently and going to an amber sign is it'll be more visible. Right now, you can't see them because they're right. they're they camouflaged. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But going to an amber sign would be more visible from further okay. back, but uh, Mass DOT does not want to drill into that bridge whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's, under, that's actually under um, uh, guidance from the uh, uh, from Middlesex. Okay. If Middlesex built the bridge, you do not want to um, penetrate mm -hmm. the metal. How, is the, how are the present signs affixed to the concrete? I'm not sure how they, they, They're not concerned about attaching things to the concrete. Well, that's where the signs are now. Yeah, mm -hmm. the signs are on the concrete now. These are not going to go in the concrete. These are going. Yes, to they are. They are. Are you saying just like? Put no, a you're saying you're going to put it back in the same place where they are, so it will be at this angle. Yes. But not drill if they're not drilled now. No, there's not a problem drilling through the concrete. Right. There's a problem drilling through the steel. So the the best place for the sign from a visual standpoint would be on the steel right. structure of the bridge because it'd be vertical right mm -hmm. in your face, mm -hmm. and you know it's like a, you can't miss right. it. Um, but uh, they don't want to penetrate the, the steel. They don't want mm -hmm. to drill anything into the yep. steel. So they put these uh, these signs on the abutments of, of the lake, or the, or the break on the uh, right. uh, pylons of the mm -hmm. lake. And so <coughs> when they did that, they decided, well, it's going to be at an angle, so we'll um, do an effect on it so that when people are reading it at an angle, you know, like the Star Wars mm -hmm. uh, intro. Oh, yeah. so, so, so they morphed the text. And the problem when they did that, if you look at the text in this, when, you're up, when you can finally come up and see it, right? Mm -hmm. They said when they did that morph, they made this text really skinny. And that's one of the big problems. If you look at the okay. old sign that we have on there, and on a normal road sign, mm -hmm. right, the text, it's fatter. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to see, easier to read okay. and recognize and all that. And so this will be that text. Yeah, this, this first 
round was kind of a fail in that they, they, they endeavored to do the right thing for the right reasons, mm -hmm. but it came out um, virtually invisible and it makes it really difficult for these guys mm -hmm. um, to, uh, okay. you know, to, to, you know, basically have, have any, have any uh, documentation mm -hmm. that you can't go under the bridge okay. and all that. So, and it makes it hard for the, the, uh, the navigators of the boat, too, they don't know any better. Yes. Uh, what suggestion the signs? I know they got to go into concrete. Yeah. Uh, maybe at the top of the sign, put a three-inch angle line at the top, so you raise the sign up a little bit. Yeah, we talked about that too, um, um, and they were resistant to that. I don't mind going back because if it were me, and you know, you have to kind of understand. It's like when you first get your new car. And well, no I don't want to see the bridge wreck. <laughs> yeah, you know, no one wants to. You know, you can't let anyone drive the new yeah. car. You know, you can't. You're parking two parking spaces and all that stuff. And it's kind of the bridge is kind of like that. It's like, you know, it's a, it's a work of art, right. and we can't touch this thing. And, and um, although I believe that, from a, uh, and I'm just thinking of things from the Lake Commission standpoint, because the Lake Commission was, you know, in 1916 we were formed um, to to make the lake safer. That was why the Lake Commission was originally formed. And, uh, form was to us to, to keep things safe because there was no rules. I think that you know, make the signs look as good as you possibly can, but set them up vertically so people understand and no one gets hurt in there. Um, hopefully, this, there, there won't ever be a you know, I told you so thing go on in there, but um, you know, it'd be better if we did that. In the meantime, I don't you know if, if this is what they have, we'll try them out and put them on there. And if this, this round doesn't work, then we go back to you know, we're, we're going to make it so it works right and it's safe. And it's, the, and it's the right thing to do. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll keep at it till we get it right. I think if they put it on the scale, it would take away from the bridge. I mean, it, would, it would look gaudy. But I think it would, I, the, in my opinion, it would, it, would, it would acclimate, you know, it would just go in there and you'd grow into it and it would be cool. You know? If I had my druthers, I'd paint no wake right across the top of that, that arc. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in big 12 inch block letters. And, uh, wow. <laughs> wow. So that's, that's how I feel about it. You're talking about environmental intrusion. <laughs> Talk about you know, putting graffiti on the bridge, yeah. right? Well, lucky there's not more stuff on that thing. So, um, all right, anybody else have it? Do we need to vote? Do we don't? I'm just asking. He's just showing us. We're just, I'm just showing you yeah. all right. what we have so far. Nothing set in stone. I mean, we can change so it. We can... I mean, regardless of what we put up there, right. we have problems with this bridge. We have problems with the old bridge. People are gonna, right. people yep. are gonna violate right. it. It doesn't matter what color it is, how big it is, where we hang it. People are still gonna violate. We have no sign on Route 20. Route 20 it's still gonna be a problem. So, so that's 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 even that's less safe than than uh, Ken Burns, in my opinion, because it's got two blind spots coming into it. And people, I got, I was, I was in the uh, two weeks ago. I was going through the thing, and it had started to rain. And I was inside, it was underneath the Route 20 bridge, and the jet ski came around the corner, right beside me, doing like 30 miles an hour. Um, and that was aggravating enough, except when he went by, he hosed me mm. and the, everybody mm. else in my boat because, because of the spray, yeah. right? So, like, <laughs> what? And, um, you know, it was raining, and he had a little girl in the thing, and he was, he was just a dad trying to get back and protect his, his uh, little girl. So I didn't. I, I did speak to him, but I didn't give him a hard time. So one thing about the since you're on the bridge stuff, and this is something I'll talk about later if, if when we discuss some safety issues, is is there any type of ruling right now of anchoring or stopping multiple boats under the bridge at night, which is going on? I didn't know if that's and that's something I can't moor a boat in a you know, under a bridge. property or right. Uh, well, not mooring. What I'm people at night. Uh, people at night are hanging under the. I live. I live 50 yards from the bridge. I'm there. They look. I look up. They my floor room. They're just. They're just. Sitting. They're, just, they're sitting there and they're, they're just partying under the bridge. I didn't know if there was a some type of rule. Be, I know congregating under the congregating bridge. Congregating under right. the bridge. You get to yeah. see it. It's like. Yeah. I don't, that's something I'll talk about later. I just wanted to bring. All right. I think we've a, we've addressed that problem and took care of that. What? They won't be on the on the lake again. From what I. Thank you. From what I've heard. After so. Sunday night. Yeah, was that the Sunday night? All right, let's let's shelf that until we get to the other part of it. Can I remind you, Mr. Chair, people are going to speak up that they need to uh, address the commission by giving their yes, name and their thank address. Yes, thank you. Can I yeah. move on with this stuff? Yeah, all right, so uh, off we go to the next. Uh, Can I go on to my next section here? Thank you. Yeah. Um, we'll continue patrol through Labor Day weekend. If the heat continues, um, 
and we have busy weekends, busy weeks with people still out there and it's still warm, we'll continue to patrol till it cools down and then um, it'll be emergency only, uh, like every year. Uh, other thing I have to report <coughs> is if I'm not here in the future, uh, Officer Amato, who's in the back, he's a full-time uh, boat officer as well on 3 to 11s. Uh, so he's going to be a li liaison for the police department as well. So if I'm not here, he'll be a, if there's anything pressing or needs to be uh, uh, told to the to the board, then he'll be here and uh, sure. fill in for me. Cool. Thank you. In the future. All right. I have um, nothing else to report. Thanks, John. Hmm. Captain Steele. I, I want to mention this to Mr. Diggins, just so you know, <clears throat> from the from the the point of view of. Um, enforcement no wake is actually less than six miles an hour for some boats and they would be in violation so whether it says so no wake um, could mean three miles an hour even with the six miles an hour post six miles an hour if you have a boat that somehow or another doesn't make a wake at 10 miles an hour you still have to go under the bridge at six so that's just to show there's minimums involved there um, I, I wanted to, to, to tell you since the last meeting, you, those of you that, that are on the lake or, or um, watch what goes on on the lake, you may have seen the, the, Worcester, the Worcester boat, the Worcester fire boat has now changed its name and no longer says Worcester fire on it, it says Worcester public safety. And the reason it does that is because um, the Worcester police and the Worcester fire have partnered up to use that boat. Um, we've been out on the lake a couple times, a couple of um, uh, maiden voyages and dry runs. Um, at this point in time, we're probably going to be pretty much off the lake also after Labor Day. I know that we're going to team up with the fire department, <coughs> have a police presence for, um, I think it's the Dragon Races and maybe a couple of regattas. We'll put a, uh, on duty police officers on the boat with the fire department at that time. <coughs> Next year, we hope to um, be out on the lake more. The Worcester Police Department, as most of you probably are aware, is in the process of of putting on a, um, a new police class of probably somewhere between 35 and 40 uh, new police officers. Uh, once they're um, trained and up and ready to go, uh, we, will, we will probably be able to start using manpower in other areas. One of those areas we hope to be <coughs> is, uh, is on Lake Quinsigam and more at the time than we were this year. So th that's, that's what we're looking at now. The partnership looks like it'll be pretty good if we can get along with those firefighters. There's a couple couple guys in the room that know how tough firefighters are to get along with, but um, if anyone can, it'll be my guys. So, um, like I said, the fire department put the words public safety on the, on the side of the boat, and it looks like that uh, we're going to have a, a partnership going into next summer anyways, and we'll see, we'll see what happens uh, after that. But uh, that's my report, Mr. Commissioner, to Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Conway. <clears throat> not exciting. Congratulations. It's nothing to report. That is an exciting place. <laughs> you know? Don't sell yourself short. Ms. Amber. Just uh, to want to tell the commission know that uh, the Conservation Commission just recently issued an emergency certification for um, relocating the discharge point for the um, the discharge the dewatering operation at Whitla Drive. Yeah. So they're going to try to move that further north to accommodate um, the water because I guess the, the existing excavation fills with water too quickly. So they're going to, it's a tributary to the Lake Quinsigamon that they're going to be discharging to further north. So that's, that's all I have to report. Okay, and, and that, um, your understanding of that is it, it's at that point it's filtered? <coughs> they, they, they're discharging water into some type of filter and then it's going into the... I believe so. The I know that um, I've received an email, and I think you have too, that gives both the emergency certification that the Conservation Commission issued okay. and the MPDES. Yeah, I didn't. I, I kind of perused it quick for a minute. I gotta, I'll go back and look at that. All right. Um, good, thank you. Yes. Gary Engine. Uh, that's up and running now. Okay, they've got one pump running on that. And it's going through the pipes that they put out there, and they get holes all at the end. They got it going over a riprap, so yes. the water that's coming out is hitting the riprap, then going out into the lake. So, but sorry. they've only got one pump running right now, so it's really slow. They're supposed to get three more pumps up and running because they dug uh, new four new wells. 
because the wells that were there and the pumps that were there weren't handling the water going back into the build where the building is going. Okay. That hole was filled right to the top. With water? Yeah. Yeah. They had a machine down there, and I said to the guy when I went over, the machine's not still in there, is it? He says, no, we pulled it out. <laughs> That's good. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Um, is, that, is that it? That's my report, yeah. All right. Um, Mr. Smiles. And I have no report. All right. Thank you. Mr. Nelson? Uh, just one comment. I've been out in the lake sculling most mornings uh, three times a week, and I've just been impressed this summer about well behaved, certainly all the fishermen and a large number of them, but also the water skiers are. They, they really have impressed me by sort of staying out of the way when you come by in a small boat, and I think that's a great improvement. All right, well, that's good to hear. Thank you. Okay, that's it for uh, reports. Um, Update on the lake management plan. So we did an herbicide treatment, I believe, last Thursday. So we got that down. They, they covered the areas that we could cover. Um, some of the areas that uh, there was areas north of, of the uh, Route 9 bridge, kind of far down. Um, just, just like small spots, and then they had an area that was right in front of, um, I always, um, it, it's the high rise, it's Lincoln Park, where the, with the high rise right next to the bridge. There were some weeds in there, and they treated that stuff. Um, and then they didn't treat anything um, else except everything that was south of Route 20. So um, Half Moon uh, Cove and and uh, the, uh, the, little, the little cove there in Lake <coughs> at uh, Old Faith Road uh, were both, because of the base yard, because of the endangered species we have down there, we, we weren't allowed to uh, treat at this point. And that's something we're, we're, we're going back against. This is basically a, um, a consequence of, of, of you know, regulation they put in years ago uh, to protect species, not just plants, but animals and fishery species that, that, that may be harmed by whatever man was doing in there to, to, to make things better. So um, in, in order to get the uh, Conservation Commissions to, to kind of get on board with us, you know, they all want guidance from, from the folks from Natural Heritage, and that's what this is uh, all about. So we're still going there, we're still talking to Natural Heritage uh, regarding some types of uh, mitigation that we can actually kind of do a program around this. And we did embed things into our uh, plan and into our permit that would allow us to do things like hand pull weeds. But that particular method is extremely expensive to do it because you literally got a diver down there with a bag, um, you know, pulling the stuff out. And he does it a certain way and it's um, all very technical and you have to be careful not to pull the plant out. You have to do it in, at a certain time of year and all that. So. Uh, that's we have it in there in case we absolutely have to do it that way. But I prefer to, to uh, you know, to, to take another route with that. So, Mr. Chair, I guess, yes. um, thank you very much, Angela, for the report, which actually shows it. Is do, does the general public have access to this and to, to actually see the areas uh, where they did the treatment? It's on the website with the posting of when the treatment was happening. It, it expires tomorrow, but I can keep it up. So if people want to actually see the areas that were treated for weeds, if you go to the website uh, and look up weed treatment, you'll be able to see a map of the lake and where they actually treated. Okay, Mr. Chair, because I just pulled it up here just to... Okay. Yeah. Also in the posting that they, they went around to neighborhoods and posted on there, there's also a map with uh, the area shaded out on that as well. So I think, is that, did we post that? Oh yeah, we posted it on the town website. Right. Worcester posted it. Um, so. We sent the list serve out. So the information is out there. But Thank you very much, Angel. I thought it was well done, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. It's all. You can thank, you can thank uh, Angela. She's the one who got it done. Um, we uh, so we're back at the. Uh, sorry, I lost my my train of thought here. Oh, so. The other thing that we have to do is, per our permit, is that we have to uh, submit a report to the uh, to each of the the three conservation commissions, as well as um, a natural heritage. So uh, that is something we have. To, so 
a, a, a service. We have a we have a proposal here from ESS, uh, who did all the other mapping for us. So I would, if, if possible, that would probably be consistent with moving forward. Um, if that's acceptable to everyone. But basically, it's it's a report to go back in there and you know what was the effects of, of the treatment we did. They'd like to do that within the next couple of weeks, and to, to make sure that they get all the information that they need, so <coughs> that they can get this report done at the deadline, which is in October. So that's. You know, we have to submit the plan back to those guys. This will also serve as a guide to how we're going to approach this next year as well. So it gives us kind of a map of where we're going and the next, uh, the next round of this will be next year. So they'll go back and say, okay, this is what we treated. This is what we found out there. They will take some water samples um, and uh, you know, they'll, they'll go through a thorough, give us a thorough reporting on, on you know, what their assessment is on the whole thing. <coughs> I believe that the uh, total is $9,950 for, uh, for the treatment. What I'd like to do, because there's some question on if, if, if we do have to go to bid with this, um, there's a, there's a $10,000 threshold. We want to make sure that we're absolutely, that there's no appearance of structuring this deal based on our last uh, contract with this particular company. So we, we're going to go back and confirm that. But I, I would like to get a motion uh, that based on that confirmation that we that we approve the amount and get this thing moving forward so we can meet our deadline. I'd like to make a motion, Mr. The Chair, that does, we approve this. Does anyone have any discussion with that before we? No? Makes sense. What's that? Makes sense. Okay. Second the motion. It's pretty straightforward. All right. Yeah. So second the motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. So voted. <coughs> um, so discussion of review and rules in regards to carp fishing um, on the lake. So I don't know how many people were involved in this. This is kind of a also a safety issue uh, going on, but there's a, there's a sport uh, called carp fishing, and basically how this sport is, and this isn't new to Lake Winsigma, it's been happening um, you know, for years, ever since I've been on the lake. But basically it involves uh, lighting up the, sh the, uh, the shallow water towards shore so that you can see the carp, and we have a big carp population in Lake Winsigma, and in fact, we hold the state record for the biggest carp that was uh, captured or, or caught in the state. Um, what the consequence of that distinction has uh, had people from other states and all around to come into Lake Winsigam and the carp fish. So the method the carp fish is basically is that you have a boat and it's got lights on it and the lights light up the shore. Um, and there's uh, the fishermen are on the boat with, a, with compound bows uh, and arrows with lines attached to them. Um, and they they fish. That's how you carp fish, and you shoot the uh, the carp with the with the bow. And I think it's actually a cool sport. My concern with the sport is that they're discharging a compound bow. Um, and you know, at my house, for example, if I'm sitting around watching TV with the family, is literally like 35 feet from the shore, from where these guys are. I was on my dock one night, and they literally were five feet from my dock. And, uh, and it lights up. So anyone who has experienced this is basically the, to imagine a paving light shining in your window and the sound of a generator, because that's how they're running the lights, and um, you know, whatever music they're playing, and they're yucking it up, and that's all well and good. But they, you know, my real concern, besides the nuisance of, of the lights, uh, is the fact that they're discharging a weapon that close to a residence. So my proposal would be now, would be to schedule a hearing to, to talk about this because I want to bring in, I just don't want to make decisions or laws or rules in a vacuum. I'd like to bring in uh, representatives from Fish and Wildlife because there's, you know, no one can, has been able to tell us exactly, well, this is the rule, this is the law. You know, this is what you can do and what you can't do. If you were hunting, if you were duck hunting with a bow, you could not shoot it out of a boat. If you were doing any kind of gaming, you can't shoot a, a, a rifle out of a boat. If you're hunting duck and you got a, a, a gun, you actually have to go over, if say you've got the gun, the duck in the water and the duck isn't dead yet, you'd have to go over there, go to the duck, shut your motor off, and then shoot the duck. 
So you can't, you know, you, the, if this were any other kind of, of sport, hunting, you, could, you wouldn't be able to do this that close to a resident without permission. So what I'd like to do is I don't want to ban <coughs> crop fishing on Lake Sigma. What I'd like to do is set up a regulation somewhere along the lines that you cannot carp fish within 150 feet of our residents. You know, it just makes sense. We recently had an, an episode, and I'm not going to play the video at this point. We'll I'll probably save that for the hearing, but we have it on we have it on video. And a carp fisherman. This was a professional rig. This guy was all lit up all around the pontoon boat, and um, these guys were from out of state, and uh, they were fishing out there, and they were probably around 9:30 or 10 o'clock. I forgot the exact time. They hit a dock and tore the diving board off the dock with the boat. It looks like in the video that they were, they were distracted because they were catching something on the other side of the boat. So, you know, those kind of things, you know, it, it's just dangerous to do that. And that could have been, you know, someone could have gotten knocked over and discharged the bow there. And again, this house that, that owned this dock was literally 30 feet, I think, from the, from the shore, from where these guys were standing. So I think it's a, it's a uh, potential danger, a uh, real danger for uh, the, the residents on there, and you know, the lighting itself is, is, is a nuisance um, because it, is, it just lights up your whole, your whole yard when they're doing it. So I'd be surprised if not a specific violation against using lights for any kind of hunting or fishing. That's, that's usually a rule. Yeah, so it's interesting to hear what they We're trying to get this stuff in, and, 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 <coughs> and Fish and Wildlife goes, no, you can do it if it's this. So I'm not sure. You can't throw a cherry bomb in the water and let the fish float up, you know. So I don't know. But anyway, that's what it is. So that's why I like to bring those guys in here, get all the, all the information we can, all the input we can from the, from the different uh, parties. I wouldn't mind having a carp fisherman. Or if, if there's anyone out there that, that uh, is, is actually does a sport to, to represent here as well, because I want to hear all sides of it. But that's <coughs> what I'd like to propose to have a hearing. And believe, do we need to vote on scheduling a hearing? I think so. Yeah. So. Do you need a motion for hearing? A, a motion for hearing. I'd like to schedule a hearing. Like, um, September would be nice, but I think we've got a bunch of stuff going on in September, so I'm thinking of October. <coughs> Okay. Gary's looking it up on the web right now. Mm. I looked it up. He's calling it up. He's calling a friend. Okay. <laughs> Come home, Bo. Okay. Um, I make a motion that we schedule a hearing for October for the um, have the uh, carp, carp hunting and fishing. Okay. For rule. Is there a second? Second. second. <coughs> All those in favor. Uh, uh, just, you guys got fishing out there? No, <laughs> but it might be a good uh, idea to advise the environmental police that you're also having that here. <coughs> yes, we're gonna, I'm going to invite all those That'd be great. players on there. And then obviously, excuse me, what's the PD to, to come in? Law, law enforcement is critical because we can't, you know, can't make a citizen's arrest. <coughs> Garrett. Uh, on the compound bow, yeah. 150 feet from any dwelling, 500 feet from a road, you can't fire them. Okay. Even if you're fishing? Even if you're fishing. All right. So that's, that's it. I, got, I did get that opinion. I got a conflicting opinion that says yeah. if you're fishing, you can do it. So not just me, because I've had people go by. You had a. I heard the same thing. You, you heard that if you're fishing, yeah. it's legal. Well, I didn't just say I can call him and ask him about well, it. Yeah. Well, sometimes it's We're going to have a hearing, Gary, right. so we'll have plenty of time to do that. We're going to bring the people in there so they, we'll let them hash it out okay. in the room and they can arm wrestle and figure out what they're going to, how they're going to do it. But is there a regulation in terms of the lights and the nuisance after a certain time? That was at 1230 at night, I believe that. Well, that's, that's the other thing we've talked about. Um, because Mr. Pike gets upset with this, you please state your name. And Sorry, Mr. Pike, Paula Collins. Rule number four. Rule number four. Rule number four is that you can't create a nuisance. Do we need to see your identification, or is that good enough? <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can vow it for it. That, 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 that may... Um, well, it says, rule number four says, uh, if I may, Mr. Chairman, uh, no person shall annoy another person or other <laughs> profane, indecent, threatening, or abusive language or loud or create a play any game of chance or have possession of any instrument of gambling or do any obscene or indecent act or use for the purpose of annoying another person a flashlight or any other light or horn or other device in or upon the waters of Lake Wind Um I think we need to have these people in because I think they're going to tell us that the lights are directed into the water, not at the shore. 
Uh, I think handicapped people have some special exemption, if I'm correct. So I think what we need to do is get these people in and have a formal discussion for those people who are knowledgeable of the law and how we might deal with it then. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. Great idea. So we'll, we'll get the hearing going for October. Okay. Is anything else on that one? Uh, number three, review and possibly vote on a request for the Bay State Woodies. I believe they changed their name now for a, uh, for no wake zone on September 8th during the classic boat um, show at the DCR Regatta Point. So there was a, there was concern when they put in the new docks at Regatta Point that they're not really um, uh, boat friendly to hook up to and kind of leave there because they have things sticking out of them and whatnot. Um, so there was con some concern with the uh, with the with the participants in the antique boat show that the boats could get damaged there because of the wakes, you know, people just going by. And this wasn't like wakeboards or anything abnormal. That was just a normal, you know, it's busy right there. So um, since uh, we first put this on there, I, I, I've talked to the folks at uh, Bay State Classic, Antique and Classic Boats, and uh, I guess they've come to a meeting of the management regatta, and they're going to modify the dock for this event. I'm not sure how they're going to do that, but but the uh, but the boat owners are, are satisfied with it, so I'll go with that. What they are asking us to do, though, this is a law enforcement question, is that if we can during the hours of 8:30 to 9:30, uh, uh, 8:30 to 10:30 a.m., and then again probably about 2:30 to 4 o'clock or so in the p.m. side, is to make sure that we're enforcing the regulation that there's no wake at the boat ramp. There's already a rule you can't make a wake in front of the mm -hmm. Corrigini ramp, but they just want to make sure there's an officer that make sure that that is being done, that they're not people aren't making a wake, and uh, you know it definitely happens. I don't know what we do with those buoys. But is there an officer at the, at the ramp already that day? Well, I think it has to be one in the water because because you know, So when they're putting their boats, when they're putting, when they're putting their, their boats in, in and taking they're their boats out, they're not getting bounced the around. That's the, that's the whole thing. I don't want to, you know, these things are delicate and they just want to put it on the trailer and try about it. And Lakeland Sigmund on a Saturday, can't explain, Lakeland Sigmund on a Saturday mm -hmm. is not conducive to delicate vessels. I think they'll have to hire a detail. Right. Okay. So, all right. So that's, we can, they well, can guarantee the enforcement is the higher detail. Yeah. All right. What's that? <coughs> the guarantee enforcement is the higher detail. All right. Okay. <laughs> that's what the detail will be there for. So just, just have them call the, uh, Is that this weekend? the station. No, it's a weekend. Next weekend, weekend too. Next weekend. Yeah. You guys aren't doing it. We're not prepared for it. She was spraying a lot. You guys can use some other more. I'm sure they can. I'm sure they'll All right. have some yeah. there. Chairman? Sounds like you Yes. Uh, Barbara, Barbara Kickham. Um, yeah, I talked to Bjorn, um, who is the president of the Classic Boat. Um, he, they had an accident last year. Somebody, because you know they're they're very tippy boats. Are very, you know, I don't know, but someone actually got hit and the, the bow came up and hit him in the face. It was a huge wake. But they really just wanted to. They were hoping there was going to be a normal police presence on the lake that day, and that particularly at the end of the day, someone's near the ramp to say we're taking the boats out. You know, for an hour or so. So it's not really. They, I don't think they really wanted to get, you know, they don't want to have a no wake the whole day or anything, just right. hoping that, you know, it's the weekend after Labor Day, so I don't know what the coverage is going to be. We just said you're going to be there for the Dragon Boat, so maybe the week before. I don't know if there's going to be a normal patrol, but that's that's what the request was. So he can ask for it, and I'll, I'll, you know, we'll deliver the message, but um, if they were just going to be out there anyways. Now, we don't patrol until 3 o'clock in the afternoon, unfortunately. I wish we to patrol more we, manpower and funding we just don't have the manpower to do it or the or the money to spend to have somebody out there all the time but <coughs> you can call the station and request to have an officer out there to help out if there's enough guys working day shift they may they may have somebody come in to do it okay so there should be someone there normally at three o'clock <coughs> yes right okay we'll let them know and then they can decide they want to hire detail right and i want to remind everybody involved that this is really um this particular event it's really about a community, the Lake the Lake and Sigmund community. It's Lake and Sigmund Day. It's a great event to come down. They're going to have uh, the antique boat show. Uh, there'll be yoga there. There's going to be a band. There's going to be uh, 
beer and wine. Arts and crafts for Arts kids. Arts and crafts. There's going to be the boat parade and all the uh, antiques will be in the boat parade as well as anyone who chooses to to participate in the, in the decorated floats and all that. So um, it really is about that. It's about bringing um, attention and people down and all the neighbors down to kind of celebrate the lake at the, uh, at the end of the season. So it's a great, great uh, event. And we're hoping to get all the community involved. And, and um, you know, I've already invited all the law enforcement is, is welcome to come down off duty uh, as well and, and enjoy. Can I ask a question? Yeah. I think you originally requested us be in the parade, correct? That's correct, yes. So uh, it'd just be a matter of contacting one of our, the command staff, the lieutenant, right. and asking them uh, if we'd be willing to have our boat there. So we'd be on the lake anyway, so they would pay to have a guy out there. Um, the department would fun probably fund that if, if they're okay with it. Cool. So if you call and request it, then okay. they may allow it. Okay. All right. Um, and the, the fireboat, or the fireboat, whatever, the, the hovercraft, that's the fire, right? That's fire and fire. Okay. They're bringing the fire rescue boat. It's different than the hovercraft. Is that okay? I know they had a fire rescue boat. Shrewsbury's got a little too much stuff. It was donated. Worcester donated some boat. I know, I know. The, uh, the Worcester, we well, haven't changed the name on the side of it, though. They... <laughs> so, We're a very generous community. I can, Mr. Chair, just to remind people, we're talking about Saturday, which is coming up shortly, September 8th. So. Okay. Um, <laughs> Angela, is that the oh, boat that's going to be in the parade, so it is all set? Or do I still need to call the police department? The one, the fire department one is all set. Oh, it's the fire department. Okay. That's a separate. And they're not going to do the hovercraft, but the police, okay, but the. We'll, we'll talk about control. Okay. Yeah. We'll, right. we'll get it done. But they're new boat. Okay. Um, is that, is that all set? Cool. Um, the next uh, item is to hear concerns and possibly vote a question from Worcester resident. Um, regarding number of boats on the lake and safety concerns. So um, I'm going to give everybody a little rope here, but what I'm, I'm, there's going to be some, some, uh, some ground rules is that this is going to be a respectful <coughs> conversation. And um, I want to be as close to factual statements. Um, any proposals that, that, that come out of this would be, uh, would be welcome to, to listen to that, you know, so we have you know, what you, I, I know that there's some issues and, and so any ideas of what we can do about those uh, to satisfy that. I want to make, you know, things clear. First of all, this isn't really about personalities. So any comments about a particular person or group's personality or any, anything along those lines are, are going to be ruled out of order. Um, but also to bear in mind that, you know, Lake Wind Sigma is a great pond of Massachusetts. It's a distinction that means Basically, you know, I'm paraphrasing this, is that anyone can use it for any legal purpose. I mean, you can do, and we have every kind of water sport and activity on Lake Wind Sigma that you could have. I mean, we have a you know, world class rowing venue, we have paddle boards and kayaks and motorboats and water skiers and jet skiers. Um, we have uh, swimmers, fishing boats. Um, you know, so it's so it's, there's a lot of activity out there, and everyone's got a right to do it within the rules of Lake and Sigmund. That's not to say that you know you can go out there and just do anything you want. It's the Wild West, and again, that's why the Lake and Sig Sigmund Commission was formed in 1916 was to make sure that the, you know we kept the lake safe for everyone around it. We have the legal authority to make rules and to um, you know ask the law enforcement to enforce those, and, and uh, but. You know, I'm. I, it, it's not our, our rule. It's not our job to shut down and, and you know restrict use of the lake for people without you know without real good cause. The other thing that I want to point out too is that you know Massachusetts made a law that said that if you're a great pond and you're over 75 acres, um, you can't ban uh, jet skis. They specifically said you can't ban. Them. Um, so. That option may not be available to us in in, uh, in that form, and uh, so that's probably part of the discussion. I know, and, and I'm sure some of us here that have been here for a long time remember that there was an initiative before this rule, this law went into effect, to ban jet skis on Lake Wind Sigmund, 
and we had it, there was the public library because I don't think anything else could have held it. Or back then also, because we just changed it, the rule was that you had to have the hearing in Worcester. So I think that may be why they did it to be uh, official. Um, that pretty much failed. Every jet ski manufacturer showed up and, uh, and uh, with their lawyers to, uh, to advocate for the, for, the, for the community. Myself, I don't believe that it's a, that, that, that part of it really is, is not a, a type, particular type of device is the issue. I think it's the operator that's the issue. So um, I don't think banning things is a good idea. And I remember at that, that hearing because I was there representing the Water Ski Club at the time, and our concern was that once you ban one thing, you know, it starts getting easier to ban other stuff. And pretty soon they're going to come around to something you like to do. And uh, sure enough, someone got up during that hearing and said, I think we should ban all power boats. So, you know, right, you know, right at that point, I'm like, yeah, this is exactly why this isn't a good idea to be moving forward. So, that said, please be respectful. Uh, please don't go into people's personalities or groups of, of uh, stereotypes. But, um, you know, go forward. Anybody would like to start? Gary, you, you brought this up, so you want to come to the table? I'll, I'll sit right here if that's okay, because okay. it doesn't matter. There's no microphone or anything. Okay. But, uh, I'm not trying to ban jet skis. That's yep. not. Oh. In introduce yourself. Lake Resident. Lake Resident. Yep. Thank you. Okay. I'm not trying to ban jet skis. I'm just trying to get control of the, like you said, the boundaries. It's an education thing. These people yep. have no clue what they're doing out there. They have no clue of the rules. I mean, they're supposed to be 150 feet away from anything. And these guys will tell you, Stevie, how close did a jet ski go to you the other day? About six feet. I've had them 20, 25 feet away from me. The water comes in the boat, they're so close. You've heard my story. Sean was out there one day, what happened when I called you, Sean? When you got down to my boat? Yeah, no, I was the I was same. soaked. He was soaked. I mean, it's, it's, it's nuts. And now, I'm not gonna name some of my sources, but an environmental cop that I was talking to on a Saturday at one of the boat ramps tells me when he stops jet ski operators out there, it's the same people that are driving the ATVs and the four-wheelers and the dirt bikes around the city streets. They're gang members. So that's what we've got on the lake. We've got gang members out on the lake right now. And they buy these jet skis, they use them for a year, they change their address, the banks try chasing them, they don't pay for them. The jet ski, I had a problem with, the guy lived in Marlboro. That guy won't be back on the lake. And the other thing I found out this past week is Webster, unless you live in a lake, you can't have a jet ski in the lake. And Marlboro and Framingham, a couple of lakes out there have done that. That's why all the jet skis are coming to this lake now. And there's nothing we can do to stop them. It's got to be an education. Okay. Um, anyone else? Got a, yes, sir. <clears throat> Hi, Ray Peroni. Um, 23 First Ave, right across from Regatta Point. We're on the finish line of the regatta races, so I'm in the middle of everything. Um, my concern this year, I've been on the lake 21 years. This has been the worst year for a lot of music at 10, 11, 12, 1 a.m. in the morning from a certain group of people that are non-residents. All right, I want to, I want to uh, stipulate that. Number two is from my front room in my house. I look right at the beautiful lake that's be, just being built. It's, it's, it's gorgeous. These people at, at uh, 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night congregating under the lake, mooring together, anchoring, and partying. The music starts, the house starts shaking, you can't go to sleep. I have called several times and the police come out and, and respond and shoo them away. But I have two concerns one is that you shouldn't be anchored or moored under that bridge. It's a navigational problem. So moving forward, I'd like to see if there was something we, that the commission could do to maybe put that in writing. Number two, talking about the wake zone, I sit on my deck and watch the jet skis and the motor boats and the pontoon boats and everything else come flying up in front of Regatta Point on the beach and as, you know, 40 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour, get to the buoy and slow down. So they cruise through, so they think they're not in violation of the, the uh, no wake zone. I'd like to have the commission also look at extending the no wake zone from where it is right now, where the buoy is, 
to where the beginning of the beach is. It was a regatta point. Start you start from no wake there. You're only going to gain another hundred yards. That hundred yards could save a rower, those paddle boats that they put out, the rent there in summer, and the sailboats. <coughs> I sit there and watch it and cringe, and I would welcome any commissioner to come sit at my house on a Sunday or a Saturday afternoon and watch what goes on. Not it because of, you know, the police are down the other end of the lake, they know it. The police can't be there 24 hours a day. I think if we put some stringent, more stringent, no wake buoys up in that area before someone gets killed, that's, that, and I hope that never comes to Mm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Amen. Anyone else? Yeah, you want to bring up a vote, Mr. Chairman, shared a property with Ray Peroni at uh, 23 First Avenue. Matt. And uh, Matthew Thomas. Um, we constantly see boats, jet skis flying right underneath the bridge. They don't slow down, they don't stop. And when they come from the other end of the lake heading towards Regatta Point, There'll be sailboats, kayakers, a lot of kayaker, kayakers and people on paddle boards. The boats that don't stop could so easily cook one of those people. Um, maybe the, sign, the signs might help that stuff. Um, and just as Ray said, with the people congregating under the bridge, Sunday night I was coming underneath the bridge and I watched eight people jump off the bridge right in front of me. Um, if I hadn't seen the first couple people go, and I didn't bat, you know, almost stopped the boat, they might have very well jumped right on top of me. There had to have been 60 people and maybe six to eight boats congreg congregating under the bridge. Is there, I'll testify to Fort Matt said some of the boats out there I've seen have 10, 12, 14, 15 people on them. I know they don't have enough life jackets and the boats aren't rated for that. They have boats parked near Stevie's house near uh, Horseshoe Island. Same thing, the people that were under the bridge, they started Horseshoe Island during the day and the music's loud, the boats are tied together and they just moved down the lake. Now, last night I called Shoesby PD. I don't know who went out, which one of you guys went out. Somebody went out. The jet skis were out there with headlamps. Yeah, we saw it. You saw that too? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they were out there with headlamps. I think they launched After dark. And they were flying under the bridge. Yeah. Well, those are existing rules. You can't jump off the bridge. That's an existing right, but I mean, thing, the, the, the rule. You can't drive a jet ski at night. That's a that's mass state right. law. So those are existing things the, that they're doing. The bridge jumpers were, were part of the congregation that were anchored under the bridge partying. It's a it's one big party as soon as twilight comes and they leave the other end of the lake. And I'm not going to stereotype who the people are. And I know the outer town is. They're not residents. It's the same people. It's the same people, and the police go over there, and, and they'll break them up when we call. I just hate calling Shrewsbury police all the time because they're much needed out in the streets, and that's why our town is such a safe town to live in. But if you, you know, people say, "Ah, oh, you complain." Listen, we we've been on the lake all our, you know, for twenty something years. We enjoy it. We pay extra taxes and stuff like that. And there's some nights you have to shut the windows. I'll put the air conditioners on just so you can stop the sound of the music from the people blasting the music under the bridge. It's just an unfortunate situation. It very easily can be rectified just putting, having a rule that says they can't do it and then enforcing the rule. Okay, so, um, sorry. Sorry, I'm calling in. So I have, I have two questions, I guess. Um, one is if it's, if, it, if it's the same people all the time and the police are responding all the time, the violations on the lake, is it possible to not allow them to come in again the next, you know, to launch again? Is that, is that possible under the purview to say you violated, you know, three strikes, you're out. You know, you, you, you violated, but we've gotten multiple complaints on multiple days, you can't put in. I, I don't know if that's possible. I like the idea of extending the wake. I personally think that the problem with that wake is one that it doesn't extend far enough. I agree, whoever's using that beach and the sailboats are in jeopardy. But also, the, the signs aren't big enough. It should be on the bridge. They don't <coughs> think because the bridge is high, it doesn't come. You, you missed the, uh, is that it? Yeah. Yeah, you missed it. We have a new sign coming. New sign's going up. So, so we're trying to do that. So to answer that question, we're trying to do that. Um, I just want to go back to, to just so I don't forget, um, uh, the Webster Lake thing, what Webster did was Webster 
Um, it's, it's inaccurate that the, you can't have a jet ski unless you live on Webster Lake. The, the rule is you can't launch a jet ski from Webster, the town of Webster's boat ramp. All right, so the town of Webster owns that boat ramp. We don't own the boat ramps, we manage the right. boat ramps, but the, the state owns them, so that they're all covered with the mass access, which is where Gray Pond and blah, blah, blah. If you had um, access, say, the, the, the boat ramp next to Waterfront Mary's, you could, if um, uh, Tracy would let you, you could, you could launch your jet ski right there, and you could, you could ride around. But they run. can't use the town boat ramp. They can't use the town boat ramp. That's, that's the distinction there. So that's one thing we can't, you know, believe me, if we could, and, and I don't think, again, I'm, I'm totally behind Gary with this, is, is that, you know, my, my solution, and, and I'm hoping to get some things going on over the winter time, is to basically come out with a law that requires people in Massachusetts to have a license to drive a boat. Wall in favor. So, you know, what the, that would do is that would educate everybody so they couldn't say we didn't know the rules or we weren't familiar with it or any, any of that stuff. And it would also give law enforcement an easy out. Basically, they come over there, if you're a jet skier, you don't have a license, see you later, you gotta leave. Now, hey, and, and they may not even cite them for it, unless they, you know, they, they grab the same people like five times, but at least they could say, look, you don't have a license, you can't operate the thing without a license. You know, you can get off peacefully, or we can have you towed, or you can choose, or whatever they wanna do, that's up to them. But, um, you know, that, you know that that would that would basically be uh, finite, and um, so that's going to take a long time. If anyone of you would, was had the the uh, pleasure to, to watch us try to get the charter changed through, it took us two and a half years just to do that, and that was some controversial. I know that there's actually legislation, the three pieces of legislation in front of um, legislators right now that deal with this. Two of those pieces of legislation, 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 they exempt jet skis, they exempt them. And they're saying, well, these rules, there's other rules that, that, that monitor jet skis, which is just funny to me. That's how things happen. So, I, um, you know, we, we kind of go back at this, and, and but, you know, when that happens, and it'll, it'll, you know, I'll, I'll keep everyone informed in this, but, you know, it's going to take voters, it's going to take people to stand up and say, you know, to call the representatives and say, we want this. Mm -hmm. And not just here in Worcester and in, in Lakeland Sigma, it's gonna take people state to all the state. So, and I think we have the, the momentum to do it, because this is not a problem. Um, That's not just the problem here, it's a problem anywhere you talk to, any lake. I called, um, I'm gonna say 10 or 15 watersheds and asked the people on the, on the boards, what do you think of this and why, you know, did, did you understand that jet skis were exempt? And they all just like said, what? So, uh, to, to, a, to an organization, every single one of the people I talked to and I did it randomly, just basically said that's ridiculous and that's the, you know, that's the main part of the problem. You know, banning a jet ski isn't gonna stop anything because they could just buy a boat. You know, and they're riding around with 15 people on a boat. So it doesn't matter what the device is, it's, it's, it matters what the education is and, um, and the ability to, to, to weed out the people that aren't supposed to be out there um, or out there illegally. So that's my comment on that. Um, we have a rule uh, rule 29 and Rule 30 of the Lakeland Sigma Commission that says that if you are um, are deemed an in, to, to endanger uh, someone, you can be banned from the lake. It requires a hearing. It requires you know something substantial to happen that you would keep on doing it. I would I would equate that to swamping crew boats on purpose and things like that, um, or you know just doing knucklehead stuff. But Okay, it requires a hearing. It's got to be something that, that deals with safety and not annoyance, the way that the rule is written now. And so, not just annoyance, and um, and uh, that would happen. We can also ban the actual vessel. That's the, th the rule 30 <coughs> part of the rule, I believe, right? Yes, it is. So um, we can actually ban the vessel in up to one year. So you can ban a, an operator and a vessel for up to one year <coughs> separately. Um, if, if, if you know if, if it becomes and we decide after hearing that it, that these people pose a danger to uh, to Lakeland segment so you're so right that, though that rules there it is education we had one night I was going by Stevie's house a guy had his docking lights on yeah so he said sir you know your docking lights are on and he stopped because he didn't hear me he says what I says your docking lights are on okay and he drives off well now he's coming around me again down by my house so I says to him your docking lights are still on so he pulls up a side of me, he says, I can't have them on. I says, no, the only thing you can have is red and uh, green in the front and a white 360 
light in the back, or a light when it can be seen 360 in the back. So he turns him off, he's going to pull away, he turns back and he says, well, when can I use him? So my wife says to him, when you're docking. But it's mm -hmm. an education thing, they right. don't know. Right, unless you're carp fishing. <laughs> so, you know, you got that. So, um, yeah. But you're right, it's, it's definitely an education thing, and I think it's going to make it a lot easier for law enforcement to deal with it and for everyone to deal with it. It'd be a lot safer place. So, um, I think that's, the, but that's the kind of an issue you have to do. You can't just kind of haphazardly do it. I don't think we have the authority to require people just to have licenses to operate in Lakeland Sigmund, and that would also say, well, yeah, who's going to train them and all that thing, because we don't have the uh, right. resources to do all that stuff. Where so they get the it's really got to be a statewide thing, and you got to have advocates. So I'll, I'll be, um, I'll be um, looking forward to working with all of you who are concerned about this on that particular type of solution. You know, Mr. Chin, if I can add a comment about it, you touched upon it. Yeah, docking lights should be used for docking. There's people that have had, for anybody who doesn't know, there's some pontoon boats I've seen, they look like bright headlights. Right, they are, okay? you can't see. Uh, they've shined in my home. Also, people are, and this is a sign of the times, they're tricking out their boats with lights. Mm -hmm. Flashing lights, blue lights, this, that, and the other thing. Um, <laughs> I think we have to look at it in terms of when it becomes an annoyance uh, because society's changing. And now I, I, there's people out there, they, they look like uh, they might as well be selling hot dogs at Coney Island because <laughs> they've got a lot of flashing lights and this and that. Um, so we may have to revisit this again in the future, Mr. Chair. But we already have an issue of using flashlights as an annoyance in here. But Okay, so um, that all said, um, I believe that the statute uh, chapter 91 statute basically says that you, you cannot run lights um, that interfere with the navigation of the right. lights. So that's, that would be the, the, the uh, statute that you'd have to it's an education thing point out. Yeah, so it, it, it's basically, you know, um, some Just some uh, probably one more thing for safety concerns. See in the new bridges there now, you can go between the island and the Lincoln Park Towers. Yes, yeah. A couple of sailboats moored way out there in the middle of that arch. Okay, so I'm really glad you brought that up because I've asked Casey to move. <coughs> there's one in particular. The blue one. The big blue one. Yeah, yeah. there's one in particular. That, that, they were out tonight. That's a navigational hazard. It's yeah. in the middle of the lane. And if you do, if you want to go in that last arch, which is you, a cool thing to do because you can you can go through the arch and, and look right. down the bridge. It's beautiful. Right. That, that's the, spot. the, that's the money spot. So, and you can go around the island like the right. old It's days. like a little jungle room. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of cool. So, um, but that said, that's things, and we asked them to get that mooring field because um, we didn't want it. That was one of the stipulations we had to put, down, put on there because that's kind of a, a nod to them because because of the community service they do and all of that, um, that we that we approved that and we asked them to keep it out of everybody's way. And that, that's just one boat, it's one boat right. that, it's that bothers me. The blue, the big blue one. Yeah, the big, yeah, yeah whatever, it's a name, <laughs> has a name on it. The, they were out tonight in it. The Mason or the Madison or something like that. But yeah. I've asked, them, I've asked them to, to, to ask them to, to move it. So. Yes? So just one more point about safety, I guess, that I wanted to ask, if, and this is um, for the Lake Patrol law enforcement, is that I recognize that there's nuisance versus safety, but when, when you're approaching these guys on a nuisance call, can we make the request that you do make the checks for... Um, safety in terms of are there enough life jackets or maybe because there may be a safety way to to pull them off the lake that's not a nuisance point but there's actually safety I mean that that instance with the um, <coughs> with the dock getting hit our you know was it was the, the board wasn't boat the boat wasn't boarded there wasn't a check for registration there wasn't a check for alcohol those kind of things that you could easily have removed them from the lake uh, my understanding with that particular boat is that complaints kept coming in till 4.30 in the morning after that incident. So that's four hours of calls I think you guys might have been able to avoid if maybe there was a safety. And I, I don't know what the protocol is. I guess that's what I'm asking is when you, you know, when you approach a nuisance and it's just like, hey, people are complaining, can you keep it down and we move on? Or can we get a little bit tougher? It depends on, on the stop. Um, 90% of the time, people that we stop will check, we'll do a safety check for all their items out there. Um, depending on the day and how busy it is, is usually one officer out there. So 
and 15 or 10 or 15 people on, on these boats. So it's also a safety concern for us. And uh, we can only do so much when there's, you know, three foot waves and trying to write a citation, maintain visual contact of who's on that boat and if somebody's coming at me. So it depends on the situation. Is, are you talking about the night where they were fishing and doing a boat check? That I wasn't there that night and I don't know what was done, but you also have to take into account there's myself and Kyle, the primary boat op operators for the town. So there aren't a lot of guys in the police department that can operate the equipment and without it getting destroyed. You have 44 guys and uh, right. to make sure this is certain guys that use the equipment on a regular basis. Then we have two secondary officers if we're not here. And then there's emergency operators only for, for uh, emergencies at night. So. I mean, for every boat that we stop and write a citation, there's a hundred others that are, are doing violations that we can't we can't keep up with. It's right. it. I know how I can I can see how how uh, frustrated you are. You can't even imagine how frustrated we are being alone on that boat and seeing everything happen and trying to get to all of it because we just can't. Right. It and we shake our heads every day. I wish I had two guys out there. I wish we had two three boats. Um, but we, we're just trying to do the best we can, so no, we're trying to keep everybody safe. And I, I hear you about that because we, we approached one of those boats that had, you know, probably 10 good-sized guys on it, you know, and, and they, you know, we were just like, can you just turn it down? Mm -hmm. it's, I, we, we, we're grooving to your music. It's great, but I actually wanted to hear my own music. Yeah. So, and, and they, you know, the, the response was, well, you know, the police officer came up and told us we were fine before 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of things, those little things that I think even the officers that may respond <coughs> by car mm -hmm. make sure that they, and again, it's an education thing of the public, of the boat owners, but I think we'd also, and as a member of the watershed, I know we'd be willing to come in and, and educate the police force maybe at a, um, you know, maybe at, at your, a morning meeting or something, just in terms of, this is a bit, you know, make sure everybody has the copy of rules and stuff that they know, because it's not necessarily something they do all the time. Yeah. Uh, if somebody's I'll jumping be, off the bridge, obviously that could be a cruiser. To be honest response. with you, a majority of the time that you stop a boat with all the people on there, ask who the registered owner is, it's never the person operating the boat. That person is usually never there. It's a friend of a friend mm -hmm. who's operating the boat or let them borrow it. Um, <laughs> and if they don't have the proper equipment, we throw them off the lake for the day. We give them a citation <coughs> for it. So um, bringing up the boat real quick that was underneath the bridge and issues with that. Kyle, can you just touch base on that real real quick? It was over 30 feet, I believe. Yeah, so it was registered as a 28-foot boat, and what they did was they added a over three-foot section to the boat, decking off the back, so it puts it over the 30-foot marker. So I saw him out there the other night, and I told him that was it. He got about, I don't know, 50 feet away from the North Pacific boat ramp, and I sent them right back. It's <coughs> the boat's too big for the way you can't bring it out in. So hopefully, yeah. That, yeah. hopefully that curbs that problem. That boat I, has its own karaoke machine on it now too, with a microphone. You well, hear that I urge any anything you see, no matter how many times you're going to call, keep calling. I know, it's just just it's keep just, calling because the more just, incidents that we have, and justifies and, you being out there. Exactly, and they'll see that we need more coverage. We need more people out there patrolling. So call it in if you see. We can't do anything if you don't call. And I, I want to just just mention this too, when um, when our administrators in the city, when we talk about putting a boat on, they say, do we need a boat on the lake? It's like, man, you know, you got to live on the lake to know that you need the boat. But unfortunately, you're a whole different community, and when you go way back towards where City Hall is in Worcester, they're not sure, you know, how important is a patrol? How important is having three officers assigned to it so that you can always have two working? That, that kind of thing. So it is important you make the calls because then I can say, oh, Mr. Manager, did you know there's 350 calls for service on Lake Quinn Sigmund? Instead, I look and say, oh, there were 14 calls for service last summer. Well, do we need the police for 14 calls? But if you're having the problems that you're having, and I understand, you don't want to bother the police for these kinds of things. But what it also does is it alerts the people that are not on the lake that there are things going on there every day. And um, you, you really, we, when we go to our neighborhood meetings, you know, those neighborhood groups are the same thing as this is a neighborhood group. 
if you're having issues, you, you know, don't don't be reluctant to call the police because you're afraid of bothering them. If if you have an issue that's that's affecting you and your quality of life, certainly you call the police. And if it's an inappropriate call, <coughs> the call taker will tell you this is really not appropriate for police. If they don't say those words to you, then you had an appropriate call, and the police can respond to it. Um, you know, they'll set the priority, and they'll go eventually. But but even if you're calling the Shrewsbury Police, those you, numbers help Worcester when we look at the whole that's picture what I was of the list. If you, and there's no problem if you, if you're living on the Worcester side, call the Worcester Police. Well, I have the number programmed on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> well, Feel free to program his. <laughs> <laughs> we'll flash that on the screen. <laughs> yes. Matthew Thomas, is there a, a way that the commission can <coughs> request additional funds for additional policing? That'll be? Yes. Well, that that falls into the fundraising thing, and I could go on for another couple hours about our efforts to do that kind of stuff. And, and our funding is actually based not just for weed treatment, it's based for education, it's based for law enforcement. Um, you know, there is some tricky or, or um, sensitive uh, issues regarding us giving money to a, a department in the town or the city uh, and, and attaching a specific use to it. So there's stuff going on but yes that's there is a avenue to do that and we we are we do pursue that yes yeah. and zedek summer in Shrewsbury. um i ha have a suggestion um as you go around the reports uh, during the heavy use times especially when the police are patrolling um if we could perhaps have a summary report of lake activity so for example how many violations were since the last meeting, mm -hmm. sort of a, a statistical, a data piece, how many violations were uh, given out, and then how many calls in that month came into the police station regarding, not, not, not any more details than that, but that also lets the public understand what the scope is and that people are reporting it. I, I think that will help with people feeling more comfortable in the appropriate instances of calling, we can provide. I can provide that. Oh, yeah. I think that would you be do, very actually. helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And there's an annual I, report. I if you want a monthly report, I can print it out prior to the meeting. And thank you for the extra work. But I'm trying to help you get extra people. I'm sorry, but yeah, just, yeah no problem. I, I can do that. That would be great. Yeah. Thank you. And then you. You know, a dual report. Well, it's just not quite as quick to jump and <laughs> offer to do that. <laughs> yeah. I was asking both, both the, both the In a general sense. Please, thank yeah. you very much. Just a suggestion. I guess, and we'll, we, we, we also approach, um, you know, EP, uh, the environmental police as well. So we want to work. Uh, we had, we had a change in, in, uh, in management there, but uh, mm -hmm. we got to kind of get back on board. We had a, we had a good relationship going there for a couple of years with Dustin, and he got deployed. Um, and uh, so, you know, things kind of, and then then our major major resign. Yeah, I, I think I think that was I think that was a big issue. Yeah. So it was the major. So that uh, you know that kind of changed things. So we'll, we'll we'll get back at that and try to make it you know as, as uh, effective as possible. Through the chair to Sean. Uh, Sean, this is just a suggestion. I don't know if the DPW can get you the stuff in that. I think part of the thing is that people see the boat in the boathouse, mm -hmm. so they go out and score around. If they don't see the boat in there, in other words, if you can hang stuff below the door so they can't see in whether the boat's there, because you can close the door when you go out, so it looks like the yeah, but you can see the engine. And right. Yeah, yeah. So if they just hung some of those plastic things like they do for freezes and stuff down, just touching the water where you couldn't see the boat, I'd they wouldn't know if it's in or out. They do do that too. It's a they issue. check to see if. It's a high issue. Yeah, because because yeah. the uh, little plastic those things those are hang down. Yeah, 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 but they're just plastic things. Like yeah. they use yeah. they use them in garages and stuff. I don't know if that'll damage them. the light bars or antennas. Yeah. Or I didn't think of that part. But well, have to talk to the command. Plus, it may be a permit issue, believe it. Or not. <laughs> but the uh, but they see they want they see the boats in there and they just go out and screw around. They they know you're not out there. Right. So they'll they'll think of another signal oh, system. Yeah. They'll, they'll fly a flag or something like that. You know, people they do. People do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I did when I was a kid. We checked them. That's, <laughs> That's how I know that. So, Jim, just one, one last thing um, on what needs to be done to try to. If do I need to make a formal motion at the next meeting in order to try to make a change to a certain 
law or rule of the lake with extending the no wake zone in front of regatta right? yeah is that, that something that I would have to think be? we actually have to make a rule to extend the uh the no wake i don't um, know if we had to go to, into an, an extra i think that's session. something we should, we should certainly discuss that's about what it, I mean. about doing that um <clears throat> and uh, that, that's not really going to involve a rule but to answer your question about if you wanted to propose a new rule yeah. um my suggestion would be that yeah you write something up some kind of a draft of something and then propose it there the you guys can't actually make a motion it has to be someone on the board but you can always reach out to people on the board myself included right. and say hey i'd like to i'd like to your support on this. I mean, when I go um, and ask for funding, when I go and ask for a rule change, I go to the, the people that, that can make those changes and I ask for their support. And I work with them to, to do that. And, and uh, so, you, you know, your government does work. You just got to get involved and, and, and just kind of figure out how to navigate through that. Okay, thank you. All right, is that covered? Yes, sir. I just have a question. Steve Russo, Shrewsbury Lake resident. Um, in regards to the wakes and you know those wake borders, yeah. boats and stuff, is there? I think Gary touched on it. Are they supposed to be so far away from shore or from the docks? Well, there's two things going there? on there. Yes, if they're pulling a skier, they have to be 150 feet from from a from a dock or or a, or a shore. Okay, and but how about the wake? You know, the ones that just surf. The wake three feet well, behind their boat. Right. The the wake. Because you're, what you're really asking me is that the wakes are doing damage. Right. You don't really, you're not really concerned that they're that they're that they're surfing behind the boat. You just don't like the wake. Yes. Right. Okay. Well, well, I'm concerned weird. about the wake. My broke my boat broke loose because right. the rope so, snapped, and I have a stainless steel cable. Also, that's a legitimate a secondary. That's a legitimate that's uh, concern. Now. So, there is a Massachusetts law. All right. Um, uh, and basically, it states that you're responsible. Everyone is responsible for their wake. So if something, if, if a wake damages your dock or your boat or your stainless steel cable or whatever it is, it's literally the same as if the boat hit it. So you're responsible for your wake. Your wake is an extension. It's defined as an extension of your boat and you are responsible for it. When you, when you go out to navigate in a, in a coastal river, um, there's, you know, those, the harbor masters are serious about that stuff. They don't want yeah, you bouncing are. around and that's why. And that, that same rule, um, carries over to fresh water into, into in, inland lakes and ponds. So it's, it's a rule. So if, if you, I mean it's a law, it's a state law. Um, so if you see someone that's doing that, that's your, that's your statute right there. It's, it's, it's that they're responsible for their weight. So if, you know, you got the numbers of the boat, you go, you know, this is, this guy keeps doing this. You got video, you got all the stuff. Yeah, you can, can you pursue that. Right. Is that an issue? Wait, are they, but are they supposed to be so far from shore? It doesn't matter. Doing that? From the wake, if the wake causes damage, it doesn't matter where the wake started. The wake, it, they're responsible for the wake. So if their wake carries over 300 feet or 500 feet um, and, and it does something to your property, that's that's one issue. If if they're, they're pulling a skier, they, they, can't, they can't be closer than 150 feet. 150, okay. I to go on the lake president to your point um, actually if you measure the lake across the only safe place for most of these boats carrying anyone is in the middle and it would only be one person going down it's about 300 feet across mm -hmm. so at some point the wake border well where I live yeah the wake border is probably 20 feet from one side or in the middle sometimes we have probably like a video of at least three people towing skiers within 300 feet so that means they're within 50 feet apart. We have jet skiers coming within, as some people mentioned here, five to 10 feet behind them. I witnessed jet skiers being propelled from their jet ski, flying 30 feet in the air because they're jumping the weight of the weight boards. And I, I was watching them long enough to see that they were okay, but that's the activity that's going on. It's not near the bridge or anything, but it's in a very somewhat narrow part of the lake. I'm wondering if since we can't control how many people are on the lake, which I think we should, um, can we designate parts of the lake for a particular type of use? So like the northern part of Route 9 seems like there's a lot of sailboats, typically. Um, there's a lot of paddle boarders, there's kayakers, there's people who use you know, non-power um, boats or anything like that, and things that don't create a big wake. And it would seem like that would be a good place for them to congregate and do that, use that part of the lake. and then. The people that do create these large wakes, which literally are crashing, I, I saw three docks break, I've had barrels 
at the end of my dock because I guess two other people's um, docks that broke from the wake, from the wake board. Um, so when can we designate an area for them to do that activity where it would dissipate, you know, easily across larger portion of the lake? Okay. Because that area was the most. Mr. Chair, who is this person? What's his address? I, I said my name twice. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like okay. Right. So, um, to, uh, to your point, yeah. okay, if that area for, say, wakeboarding was in front of your house, would that be okay? If we designated this is where you can wakeboard? Well, no, because it wouldn't even fit the 150 foot rule. Right. So I mean, what I'm trying to say is that you know we can do that, and we can you can have a hearing, and we can segment out the lake, but that means you're going to get everyone involved, and you know it's one of those you know nimby things versus the bite me side of things. There's 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 the you know not in my backyard, or not in my front yard, if I guess if you're on the lake, um, and the uh, you know the the bite me side of it, which is better you than me. So um, I was you know, using your 150 foot example right. in a narrow part of the lake. Well, 150 foot, you don't need to, to designate a zone there. They're not supposed to be skiing in there in the first place. You have to, we if, need to so, enforce it. Though. So, and that's right. And we go yeah. back to Sean's thing is, right. yes, what well, we need to be able to do, Sean could be sitting there writing up someone for going 30 feet in the air, and there's, you know, there's two guys, you know, right. two, 300 feet away, and he, could, he may even be able to see him. But he can't do anything because he's got a boat stopped and it's not safe. So we, you know, there may be a guy skiing, you know, 50 feet from shore. So it's a busy, busy place. And yeah, we'd like to have more law enforcement. Um, if you're from Shrewsbury, call your selectmen, tell them we need more money. Um, if you're from Grafton, same thing, tell them we need money. Um, Send the money to Worcester. Worcester, <laughs> uh, just call Roger up and he'll get the money for you. Uh, so that's th those are those are the issues we have. So. I hear you. I hear you, and I think that that's a good thing. And um, but it the, wouldn't be to designate the area based on I don't want in my backyard. It doesn't fit the rules of safe boating. Right. Well, that's a, but that's already to, to me that's already there. So we're, we're regulating and somebody that are already an existing regulation. So. Sorry. Excuse me. Just one. Second. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I can appreciate your sentiment. Yeah. We all have to keep in mind though the narrowness and the vagaries of the shoreline of Lake Quinsigamon. And this becomes a very difficult thing that I think is, would take far longer than we've really got time to speak probably further tonight. But if you were to section off the lake, uh, believe me, this would become, so, so who gets to row where, who gets to fish where, who gets to sail where, who gets to swim where, okay? Relative to the vagarities of Lake Winsigamon, it's next to the second largest city in New England, becomes a very, very uh, critical, difficult issue. And again, Mr. Chair, if I could, uh, we could talk about this till two this morning, well, eight o'clock tomorrow night. Uh, night right? <laughs> and I think it merits, uh, you know, a specific proposal, if such, for another night where that's what we're going to talk about because it, it goes far beyond the complaint that, in terms of the item that we're talking about tonight, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. This is Carl. So, um, in terms of solutions, as I'm listening to the issues, perhaps a good use of funds would be to um, get some volunteers that could go to the boat ramp on busy days, Saturdays, weekends. Maybe we could put together some kind of postcard that has the top five rules that seem to not be in existence in most people's minds. You're responsible for your wake. Um, your any time of day, your noise cannot perpetuate somebody else's enjoyment of the lake. Whatever they are, that we feel as mm -hmm. a group, and maybe that's another something to put on the agenda and ask people to come. That you could easily put on a card that you could just hand to boaters as they come in. Welcome to Lake Winsigamon. Here is so then they you can't say you didn't know, and maybe that cuts and that maybe that helps these guys have a few less calls because now people know. Because I guarantee you that. At least 50% of those people have no idea they're responsible for their own wake. We got waked a couple of weeks ago under the bridge under, at, at Route 20 because it was thunder and lightning, and this guy had a baby, two year old, in front of him on a jet ski and got scared and just wanted to get to the ramp as we were going under and decided that we looked 
more bigger than them, I guess, and more stable, and he just gunned it under the bridge, soaked Pete. I was on the other side of the boat, so I got lucky, but it <laughs> zoomed by us. And so in that moment, there were three violations right there, right? He's, he's got not the kid in the front, the other wife, the kid in the front and he, he just wasn't responsible for his own wing. But when Pete met him at the boat ramp, he, had, he was like, I'm sorry, I just wasn't afraid. And well, well, we also were trying not to get struck by lightning. So I think, you know, when you're talking about education, if people, need, we need to get more people because I can tell you from the meetings that as part of the watershed, we, we don't have enough people involved. We need people to come out, and we need people to step up to say, you know what, it's enough of an issue for me that I'm willing to spend a Saturday morning handing out cards to people, handing out that little rule book, whatever it is that just helps to educate people on a really grassroots, low-budget way that may, what can have an impact now, as you work on all those other long-term things. Yes, sir. Uh, on Paula's thing there, uh, the guy collecting the fees at the Corazini bolt ramp for hand them out. He used to. Okay. Used to. The other thing, I don't know if the commission can request on weekends that they start charging at the other boat ramp because that parking lot's full with jet skis. We're um, talking about whether we can include that in our current thing or we can add that on there. Yeah, yeah. believe me. And, and we, we also, uh, uh, Angela Parks and Rec put up no swimming signs there because that's becoming quite the popular spot. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I, I'm sure we can't. Can you charge for a park in town? No. No. Not. Is that so true? to charge for the boat ramps, you have to show what your expenses are. Um, Is, okay. I don't know what our minimum expenses would be at Oak Island boat ramp, but we'd have to get it approved by the town. So but then it has to get approved. The town's going to pay for it. No, the state, state owns, owns the boat ramp. Okay. Okay. Shoesby owns from the, the guardrail into the island. That's a that's a Shoesby. Okay. The uh, town's had to pay. So the paved parking lot and the bolt ramp is public access. Yes. Point. That's correct. And, and we, the town has graciously used its DPW trucks to pick up trash for annual uh, trash collections mm -hmm. on the part, part of the initiative of the Watershed Association. Uh, and they've taken away a lot of trash, which, you know, if you want to charge for it, it would cost. You know, I'm just sorry. interested in charging the people using the boat ramp. Yeah, okay. That's a, that's a good point. So that, that is something we've been looking into. So we'll, we'll Mr. Chairman, straighten up. Let's yes. make a comment on Mrs. Collins' uh, thing. Okay. A couple of years ago, do you remember when we had the cards printed to show Yeah, I was, just, I was thinking about that. I, 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 I'm, think, I'm thinking I'll, that dovetails yeah. exactly with what we yeah. did once, except for yeah. we had yeah. made a map of of how the... Because, yeah. because we have our own way of man navigating this lake which is not exactly like how, how other bodies of water might operate. And that also because people had no idea. We'd say, look what they're doing. Well, they didn't know. Right. So I think it, as, as a police officer is, is, is tasked with enforcement, education is huge. You can save a lot of trouble if the people are educated because I, I'm going to tell you, uh, even, even though people have driver's licenses, Mr. <laughs> Chairman, <laughs> you stop them, you go, what are you doing? Oh, I can't do this? You yeah. got you. You got a learner's permit. You had to pass the test. You knew this at one time. How close to fire? Follow that fire truck. You're too close to it. Mm -hmm. Even says 300 feet back, right on it. But um, that 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 point, I, I think that uh, one other thing I wanted to say that even though tonight we had some some give and take talking about the different rules and stuff, and you know maybe you feel so like oh we said this, but they said they can't do anything about it. It's helpful to to people like Sean and myself um, because we we see what we see. But we also, it's good for us to know that there's things that really irritate you that's going on. And then we say, okay, that's a pretty important thing to, to enforce. Because I know that, that if you talk to the Worcester guys and the Shrewsbury guys, the way they enforce the, the, the um, rules of the lake, we, we, tend to, we tend to be kind of more community oriented in what we do. And then the people will tell you the environmental police operate a little bit differently. And I know that you guys are like real happy when you see the environmental police <laughs> grab the boat with 12 people on it. But uh, we, we also do the same thing. And I think it's even, even if what we did tonight, no new rules come out of this or anything else, we, do, we pick up a couple of things that, that are really irritating or really bothering you, or maybe some things that are very unsafe that we just weren't aware was going on or was happening as much as it did. A lot of the stuff I hear, it sounds like it 
it's really happening when there's no no patrol on the lake at all. That's what said. Yeah. They look at the boathouse. They know. Yeah. They can yeah. tell and, you. And so um, I, I, I would be a proponent anyways of, of having more patrols on the lake. Um, and, you know, hopefully we'll be able to do something about that next year. That's our intention. And um, but we worked with Shrewsbury mm -hmm. last year on that, and hopefully uh, we can do something this year. But I, I personally appreciate what I heard tonight because it will help me when I go back and talk to my guys. Um, is that it? So um, I'm going to echo Roger's sentiments with this and, and uh, say that I really appreciate, um, you know, the level of um, uh, civility that you guys had presenting all this information. Um, I want to say that, that I, I, you know, I, I'm not blocking anything out from a possibility to change things around and do what's, what's best for the lake. So if, if it requires a hearing, to give you an example, there's actually no rule uh, in the Lake Wissing rules that says what direction you have to go and navigate the lake in from. There's a tradition, right. you know, the that, that people go, you know, go on the east side to go to go right. north and on the west side to go south. But it's not really a rule. That doesn't say we can't, you know, have a rule. I don't, I'm not a proponent of making a whole bunch of rules if, if you don't really need them unless it's, it's, it's clearly a safety issue and that we need to deal with it. Um, and, that may, that, and that may make sense. Um, so, uh, but I, I really do appreciate all the input that, that, that you brought forward and that um, there's a lot of good ideas and a lot of, a lot of uh, legitimate concerns that you, you've had here. I'm really excited that we have this many people in the room participating in this. This is exactly what we need. So, um, uh, the, you know, the world is ruled by those who show up and, uh, you know, you guys want to make change. You, you, you got to do it. I was schooled one time early on because um, I, I called up the selectman in town and I said, you know, they ought to do this and they ought to do that. And the, the selectman kind of paused and he goes, well, who's they? You know, you're they. You want something done, you got to kind of go out there and do it and get involved. And that's the way it works. Um, so don't think you don't have a voice. Don't think you're, you're you know, you're an annoyance to the police officer um, or, or the police departments. Well, you know, any of the law enforcement guys, could you, could you call up and you're pointing something out and say, hey, this is dangerous and, you know, someone's going to get hurt because they need to know that. And again, they can't be, there, it, 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 even on the road, you know, you can't be there everywhere. You, could, you know, someone could be going down Route 9, 90 miles an hour. Well, law enforcement may be doing something, they may cover an accident, they may be doing something else. They, you know, they, so they, it, it's, it's there, but it's still good to have that voice and, and, to, and, to, uh, and to participate. So I really appreciate you guys coming in here today. Um, if, anything else involving that? All right, moving on. Um, Is the air conditioner working in here? <laughs> <laughs> it's all my hot air. I'm, I'm overdoing it. I'm Mr. Overdoing Chairman, it. thank you very much. I, that was productive. Thank you. Um, so an update from the Lake Quinsigman Watershed Association. Who is our? Guess I'm doing it. Okay. Uh, Barbara Kickham, uh, Lake Quinsigman Watershed Association. Uh, I guess you guys covered pretty much our Lake Day already. September 8th, just want to remind people of the date. It's all day long. Um, September 8th, rain or shine. Uh, I want to give a plug to our sponsors, USA Marine, Full Throttle, Marine & More, uh, Ski Chair, Shoreside Docks, um, they're all donating close to $500. Um, Napoli's Restaurant is also donating, Doug Russell. And I um, also want people to know that the, if they do come out, um, we're having a number of um, uh, the judges are uh, local um, regulatory people, like Representative Hannah Kane for Shrewsbury, Senator Michael Moore is going to be there, um, City Councilor George Russell, Representative Jim O'Day, um, and then Shrewsbury Selectman Moira Miller, Beth Cassavant, and our Grand Marshal Angela Snell will be there as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, thank you actually for bringing up the uh, all the all of our representatives that are going to be there. Um, here you go. These guys are going to be right there at their speeds, accessible. And I can tell you that I know every single one of these people that they, that they mentioned, and they're good people and they listen, um, but they're only going to listen to people who, who talk to them. You know, so so this your, here's your opportunity Show up. To, to, to get in there and, and get in front of someone that's there, that's, that's you know, on the lake when you, while you're doing it, 
um, that, that kind of gets it while they're standing there. You can probably right point out, see that jet ski going by, you know. Um, so that's your opportunity to do it. And I'm going to say every, all the folks at home, again, go to Lake Day. Go to Lake Day because it's fun. And that's what, you know, this was all about community thing and to kind of just have a day to, to, to celebrate the lake. Uh, but also, you can go there and you can, and you, can um, you know, state your point of view respectfully. Thanks. I just want to also note that um, the Watershed Association meetings are now going to be the last Thursday of every month, so they're going to be the day after your meeting. So tomorrow night we'll have a meeting at the Marine Corps League. So they're this very wasn't formal, fun enough. and what we time? try to get done in one hour's time, and you can have a beer. And sit what there. time at the Marine Corps League? It's seven o'clock. Pretty much done by eight. And this is actually happening tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure I didn't hear this wrong. You're going to. Provide a free beer. <laughs> <laughs> Very cheap at the Marine Corps. <laughs> Barbara, I want to say welcome back and to let you know the Mounted Patrol has scheduled uh, the Mounted Unit to be at your event. Uh, okay, event. good. Good, thank you. All right. Perfect. Thanks. Mr. Uh, Mr. Patrick. Um, just a couple of points of information. It's uh, Labor Day, so immediately after Labor Day or even sometimes before, the schools will start. Uh, be starting practices out on the water. Um, but I just wanted to make everybody aware. We're also having our coaches um, safety meeting on Wednesday at Wednesday, right? Donahue Rowing Center at seven o'clock. Angela's gonna join us. And if anyone else would like to join us just to reinforce the safety aspect of of, of operating on the lake to the coaches, uh, that's that would be you would be more than welcome. Thank you. I was planning on attending, is that okay? That's great. Thank All you. Right. Bummer, huh? <laughs> and uh, Angela, there's something I, I know of. Yeah, one more thing. Yeah. Um, Senator Moore's office um, told us that they uh, the environmental bond bill includes a hundred thousand dollar authorization for invasive aquatic plant species eradication in Lake Quinsigamon. However, it hasn't been funded yet, <laughs> so they're going to be sending letters to the to the governor's office to hopefully release some of that money um, that would go towards Lake Quinn Sigamon. Um, when we do get that letter, we will let the commission members know and the Watershed Association, and they would, you know, we're gonna encourage people on the lake to also support um, getting that funded. And if they hear from more people, we have a better chance of if you, getting that. If, thank you very much for being that. If you are a Worcester resident or a Shrewsbury resident, um, again, this is, your, this is your opportunity to voice um, where you think the state should spend their money. Uh, Senator Moore was very effective in getting us a $20,000 appropriation uh, two seasons ago, um, which we got the money and, and, uh, and we're used putting it to good use. Uh, the invasive, you know, we have nine invasives in, in, on the plant form here, plus the Asian plant. So, um, you know, we're, we're, again, we're spanned by three major highways. We've had a lot of men uh, related yeah. modifications to the lake that have caused mm -hmm. issues. So, <coughs> all that said, here's here's a uh, here's an opportunity to get this going, yeah. and, and I really yeah. thank uh, Senator Moore for for thinking about us and getting us included. Just going to add to that, Mr. Chair. Just recently going over Route 20, Sacred Lotus uh, behind Dunkin' Donuts be exploded. Yeah, well, it should have been it's it like growing pretty like wilted crazy. because they nuked it yesterday oh, okay. or, or Thursday. So it's, it's well, just the point is, it's going to be a constant. Uh, yeah. Uh, need for vigilance to keep they do look the lake nice. navigable. They are nice looking, but as long as they're not in front of your house, right? Yeah. 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 I can tell you that the neighbor doesn't like them very much, but they are beautiful. It doesn't even look like you can get to his dock anymore. No, no. And it, w it was okay, like, until about three weeks ago, and then it just, you know, it was, it was, it was like Jumanji. Mm -hmm. just, just like so, um, so hopefully we'll, we'll we'll eradicate that. If you want to get see a sacred lotus, then you know go, go, to, go to Bohemia. We put them on the plate. Um, all right. Is uh, uh, oh, sir. yes, sir. Yeah, I'm Phil Raffer. I live on the Lakeside Drive. And if I heard you correctly, when you're talking about the uh, the weed control yeah. and not including. Uh, the area on the lake between Sunset Beach and Route 20? Yeah, it's not, that's, yeah. That's the worst part of the entire lake. Well, actually, it's not the worst part, but it's, it's close. Um, 
And uh, but they they found uh, uh, face eye in there, and I'm not happy about it. They found what? Face eye. We have an endangered species. Yeah. 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 It's a six well, six yeah. little guys in the country. Yeah. yeah. Really. Got one. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, someone had um, had has made a comment that we you know we can we have a logical discussion about. That was you know, me, Angela. Oh, hey, Angela. Yeah. So, um, and you know, and I tried to do that with um, with the folks at Natural, uh, Natural Heritage, Heritage. Mm -hmm. but um, you know, they're they're guiding, uh, not guiding, they're guarding a regulation that says that if you have any type of endangered, you know, and I'm going to say this too, also that I'm not a proponent of causing harm to the lake. I mean, there's there's a there's a happy medium when you don't want to throw out the uh, the baby with the bathwater, but on the other side of it, I don't want to do things that are going to create harm to the lake, and and it's hard to to, to even with the with the chemical treatments and how they affect the sediment in the bottom of the lake and things like that, because if you look back in history, and I'm very historically based on on the decisions that I that I make and the things I propose here, um, it, is that you know man did a lot of stuff to this lake and and. In the spirit of making things better for for whatever, I mean, Wyman Gordon rerouted a stream so they could cool down the plant so they could support the war effort. Um, seemed like a good thing to do. Um, and uh, when the electric company came in, they connected an island to a peninsula, and um, they were supposed to put a pipe in there so they wouldn't block flow, and they never they never did it. So, but it seemed like a good thing to do because otherwise we wouldn't have such easy access to electricity. So, you know, there's a lot of things going on. I don't want to add on to that by treating something that we can't treat. That said, okay, I believe that there are ways where we can help protect the rare, which is what they call those plants, and still do with the treatments that we need to do because I don't think the choking off an entire lake on the back, of, there on the back of a plant that we can save in another manner, mm -hmm. okay, um, and they do this all over, the, you know, conservation commissions make you put in, you know, retention pools and things to mitigate wetland and, and things like that. So, you know, we're going to pursue that and we're going to get things done and we're going to try to get these, these areas that are concerned and the invasives, which is round pond in front of your house and in, in, in front of your house, Angel. So we're, we're going to, you know, we're going to keep pursuing it until, until we figure out a way to do it. Okay. So if it's not... Yeah, you know, anyone who who would like to come to a meeting with me sometime with with mass with uh, so natural heritage, I'll I'll let you know. <coughs> just, just let me know if you want to uh, see what that's like. Okay. Just one, one question to Angel. Angel, do you know why the, the um, red flag has been flying over at Regatta at the swim area? There's been a red flag there for like I mean I look right out my window every day. I'm going to go swim and I see. The red flags on the lifeguard chair, which usually means no swimming. There's no swimming. No swimming. It's it's at Regatta Point in there. So they're still having a problem with it. If it's up, I didn't know it was still up there. But was up, I believe that's up till yeah, at least past Labor Day. It's going to be up until Not past Labor Day, at least till Labor Day. Oh, okay. Is my understanding. Because I didn't see anything on the web, any webs. Yeah. Well, the town of Shrewsbury doesn't notify people. Well, I don't know if the lake. The lake it's it's beach. only that beach. Right. So right. it happens to be right across from yeah. no. it, it, Regatta. Um, we don't test the water right across from that in, in the shooting beside. The um, well, they test it for swimming at Sunset Beach, and they test um, yeah. for recreational waters um, at Gouch Park. There's an area near um, the other pump station in Worcester. I'm Where's sorry, that? in Shrewsbury near Burger King. In that area? Yeah. Okay, so they do test that. Yeah. 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 Okay. So there hasn't been any issues on the shoes. So, so it's all right to swim at the house here. Right? Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> well <laughs> you should only swim in a designated swimming area. But and not, as long as it's not 50 feet from shore. Yeah. <laughs> but according to Board of Health standards. Unless you're wearing a headlamp. What? I don't know. Okay. So okay. So um, moving right along. Set, uh, set a date for the next meeting. <laughs> Uh, Wednesday, the last Wednesday of next month is the 26th, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Yeah. Is that good for uh, All right. Okay. Is that good for you, Officer Mom? Oh. Well, Kyle's checking his. his uh, Can I make a motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman? All right, we can second that. So, so, all right, we got that. We're moving on from that. Second.
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. So moved.